barbershop conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, man. Uh, checks and balances, nine wise, man. Before y'all get into it, man, um, before I get into it, excuse me, I just got to say I had a moment this morning, man. And uh, for those of you who don't know my background, I, I, I just want to be a source of inspiration for, for some of y'all. Um, <clears throat> I grew up in so South Central LA from eight until now. And from birth to eight, I grew up in Harlem in the Bronx. And uh, hence, that's why I have an affinity for Malcolm X. I was born in the hospital where, where, where he was pronounced dead at. And uh, um, I got, a, I walked out of my house today and uh, taking the kids to school and a Lincoln jumped. I wish I could have recorded this. Lincoln jumped out of his chair. He, he He's still in a bump, as you guys can see right there. He's still in a bump, right? He jumped out of his skin and says, Daddy, Daddy, it's snow on the mountains. It's snow on the mountains. And I went to PS91 Annex in the Bronx, PS91. I had to walk by uh, drug addicts, alcohol. I had to wear a full onesie. In the in the winter time, you know that big where you walk like a like a uh, like a mummy, you know. And uh, I just I just gave gratitude to God and and mommy and daddy's work ethic, man. Because when my kids get out of when my kids get up in the morning tomorrow, we're gonna drive by mansions and snow capped mountains. And for some of you, you're gonna say, Fred, you arrogant motherfucker. Yeah, I'm arrogant. It took arrogance to get here. I didn't blend in. You know what I mean? I took the road less traveled and I'm proud of myself. And I'm every day I wake up, I'm, I wake up with 100% confidence in myself. No matter what y'all say all I, I wake up 100% confidence and self-belief and self-accountability. And it all paid off today when Lincoln, I'm gonna record them later. You know what I mean? Cause I want this on record. You know what I mean? Uh, for the Hawthorne legacy. When I pick him up from school, I, I want him to talk about how excited he was to see these snow-capped mountains. And I'm going to tell him that uh, it wasn't always like this for Daddy. Anyhow, man, um, I I was I was thinking how Al Heyman's kind words and smooth talking, silky voice is pimping PBC fighters out of their... I'll, in addition to think about Adrian Broner, how he's pimping the PBC fighters out of their prime. And I was thinking about Devin Haney. You know, um, first I'll say this. Uh, I guess I was right about about Bob L, right? Our black fight fan basically called me a coon. You fuck with Bob L. You ain't shit. Bob Arum, what else? Uh, uh, Bill Haiti said on my show, Bob Arum is your daddy. <laughs> and I'm just giving the information to the people. I don't need Bob. Bob offers me a five-star steak dinner every time I'm in Vegas and I've never taken it. But because I give the information to the people, you're able to have analysis. And I knew if if Devin Haney would have stayed on the zone, guess what? Guess what? He would have been railroaded. He wouldn't have a fight. Trust me when I say this. He only had one option to get fights. And that leads me to this, which was top rank. Which leads me to this. Devin Haney will have three fights in 10 months, making over $10 million. I'm going to repeat this again. Devin Haney will, will have had three fights. I don't know how much money he's made, but undisputed champion of the world on ESPN. You factor it all in. He would, I'm guesstimating, hypothesis, educated guess. He would have made, here's what happened in Devin Haney's career. He's in the Hall of Fame, right? Whether it's his fists, whether he's inducted, Devin Haney is today at 23 years old in the Hall of Fame. He will have three fights in 10 months. Lomachenko fight, when he beats Lomachenko, that will 100% put him in the Hall of Fame. And he would have made $10 million. And Bob Arum don't give two smacks about him because he didn't, not because he's not, not be, out of disrespect, 
but because he's had Shakur since the since the Olympics. So there's a personal relationship there and you got to honor that. And if you mad at that, what the fuck it. I mean, I don't know why you'd be mad because that's just the reality of this, man. You spend more time with people, you have an affinity for someone. Just like Bob Barron was probably one of my first interviews and I I love bantering with going back and forth with Bob. Like I really really love that, man. And, uh, and I know I can't stump him up, but, and he enjoys coming, going back and forth with me. But, uh, Bob Arum has been a huge asset to Devin Haney. Bob Arum and Bill Haney, and regardless of how I feel about them signing with top rank in this, at this stage in their career, Bill Haney got to be manager of the year. Uh, uh, if he had one more fighter, and I know he's going to be mad at me for saying it. If you had one more fucking fighter that had one more fight. Did he train Amari Jones? He would be in, in the court of public opinion. Not in my opinion, but he's definitely top three trainer of the years. You know, they went to a foreign soil two times. And, uh, 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 uh. Went on foreign soil and won twice. They deserve some type of award. And 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 by the way, uh, Devin Haney is a nip and tuck with Carissa Shields for Fighter of the Year. I'm just gonna say that now on Barbershop Conversations. Go to go to my community page. It's they at 37. percent They battling. Uh, so Carissa Shields, tell your team to come to my uh, go to my. Uh, community page Devin make sure you send your team your supporters to my community page so they can vote you know what I mean they already subscribed they probably ain't seen it you know what I mean so but I I, I, I want to say this in the landscape of boxing today what it was a good decision you can't go to PBC uh Lou DeBella doesn't have a network and doesn't have the financial resource. Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, uh, Eddie Hearn was very passive and very push was pushing him towards it because he didn't have the budget for it. And, and, and it's very apparent because he's trying to get younger. Uh, he's not reaching out for superstars and signing them to long-term deals. As you can see, he just wants to do superstars one fight at a time. And uh, I, I wish I could show y'all these snow-capped mountains that I just pulled over before I got home. But I live on a very famous street. And if I show y'all motherfuckers, y'all gonna know the area in which I live in. So I don't want to show y'all. But, man, this is, this is breath. I've never seen this in my life, waking up in the morning, ever in my life. You know what I mean? And the fact that I that I can get that reaction out of Lincoln is flat out amazing. But I'm going to say this. It's two prongs. Devin Haney made a real good team. Haney made a good decision uh, based off the current landscape of boxing. You know what I mean? Uh, I wish so many motherfuckers wasn't eating off of them. But that's the but that's the arrogance of me. That's how I do business. And that, me cutting out the middleman definitely added to my millions uh especially when you're doing real million dollar real estate deals you know what i mean i play my real estate agent fat flat fees they don't get the percentage i play them fat fee so when i buy a property if that real estate agent is giving five percent i get that two and a half percent and i pay my real estate agent a flat fee and they're gonna take it because i do a real i do a million dollar deal one at minimum once a year I mean, I don't have multi, I have multi millions, but I don't have the ability to do million dollar deals every three months, you know? So, so you want me on your team. If you're going to make thousands of dollars every year guaranteed and you do nothing, I negotiate the deal. But anyways, I'll teach y'all on my, I got to teach y'all on my Patreon. I got to bring my Patreon back, man. But, um, uh, and I just gave y'all a lot of game right there. If, if you in the real estate buying and holding and man, I just, I just, Saved y'all a lot of money. Anyways, five, two and a half points on a million dollar deal. Truth. Who you, man, come on, man. Anyways, uh, uh, and then you negotiate. And if the, I'm gonna give y'all one more deal. And if the market's, and, the, and if the property's been on the market 100 days, and you know it's a five point deal, you go to that real estate agent and say, You take two points, you give me three. 
I'll buy the house 14 days. If you gotta have perfect credit, you gotta have the cash, we can close this house in 14 days. If you take 2% and give me 3%, or you take one and a half and you give me three and a half, because this property has been on the market for six months, it can't sell. I don't know what the, I don't know what's going on. I want it. You take 2% and you give me 3% and you can represent both sides. Deal or no deal? Call me. Call me by five o'clock today. <laughs> that's why I'm wealthy and that's why I'm rich and that's why I'm intelligent that's why I ain't got no middleman in life Fred why you don't talk about white people why you don't hate on white people I ain't got no white people in my life Fred why you don't talk about the Jews I ain't got no Jews in my life I got an Asian woman and half black half Asian kids I, that's all I got in my life I don't wake up to like man what is this Jew thinking about me no <laughs> I don't, man. I don't. Because I negotiate like I'm a like I'm a Jew, right? I guess. I don't know. I don't know if that's like a Jew. I don't know if that's popular or negative to say, but that's why I am who I am. You know what I mean? That's why I can wear this X sweater. Proud! Y'all motherfuckers gotta wear it. Motherfuckers can't walk in and work with a sweater like this on. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I want to say this. Um, 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 y'all PBC fighters better wake up. Y'all letting Al Heyman's velvet voice pimp y'all out of your prime by saying, just because he says, I love you, just because he says, I want what's best for you, just because he says that every time you fight, he says, I'll have you back in six months, four months, eight weeks, whatever he says to you, y'all believe it. And he's kind. And if you ask him for an advance, he'll give it to you. You know what I mean? If you need little things, he'll give it to you. But it comes out of, you want a private jet? He gives it to you. You want uh, every you want tickets to the Laker game? Four seats, he'll get it to you. And you think that's cool. But he keeps a ledger, just like Bob Arum. There's no difference. Money is never free. Money is an exchange of goods. It's, it's, it's always an exchange when it deals with money always an exchange it's never free you know what i mean that's why when black people say oh keep the change keep the change no i'm not mad that you said uh you let that man keep that 17 cents no it's a mindset uh how much is 99 cent you just say oh, you just walk off with the penny it's not the penny it's the mindset that's why I go into every deal. He's not my ally. You either going to be a business partner on my side or a business partner on the other side. I wish I could explain how I got this house I just got. Oh, Fred worked it like a G. Oh, man. Worked it like a G. Man, I wish I could. Man, 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 oh, man, oh, man. Man. Anyways, man. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, y'all PBC fighters better wake up. Adrian Broner told y'all Devin Haney had three fights in 10 months, made over $10 million, and is in the Hall of Fame. April, he is officially in the Hall of Fame, y'all. I'm going to repeat this again. April, he is officially in the Hall of Fame. At 23 years old, 24, I don't know how old he is. And, and, and I'm going to say this. Who did Timothy Bradley sound like when he gave that speech? Timothy, are you listening to me, Timothy Bradley? Because motherfuckers be coming on my channel, on my show, be hating on Devin Haney. I'll be like, I don't know what y'all watching. I see greatness when I see Devin Haney. Yeah, am I overcritical of him? Yes. But when I see Devin Haney, shit, I see a complete fighter. Y'all think motherfuckers just gonna walk through. You think Devin Haney's, you think Tank Davis can walk through that jab and not know that that, if he come in there, that up, that same uppercut that he threw against T, uh, what's that motherfucker? Leo Santa Cruz. You don't think that same uppercut is coming back when he fights Devin Haney? You don't think that short right hook and a pivot is coming? Oh, man. Y'all motherfuckers, y'all better, y'all better wake up when the Devin, and, and I know I'm overcritical of him because I want the best for him, but Devin's the truth, y'all. Tank is the truth. Shakur is the truth. They all the truth. And pure talent, I go with Shakur. Discipline and talent, 
I go with Devin. Uh, freakish raw ability, I go with Tank. Distractions, I has the most distractions, Tank. Second distractions, I go with Shakur. No distractions, I go with Tank. I mean, I go with Devin, and Devin is a resemblance of me. Perfect skill set, discipline, you know what I mean? No, no outside noise. Uh, me and Dre live in truth. There's nothing that y'all can say online that Dre doesn't know about me. And we live in on, we walk in honesty. We live in truth. And 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 I I just dis I'm just disciplined. Don't drink, don't smoke, no tattoos. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, that's the reality. I save every penny, and then I double it, double up, turn seven to a fourteen, fourteen to a whole thing. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, my son jumped up and down when he saw snow-capped mountains. And he don't know. I had to walk to PS91 in the Bronx with that mummy snow snow outfit on, walking like this. You know what I mean? You can't even can't even put your backpack on. You got to go to the ground when you're a little kid. You got to fall to the ground and take the backpack straps off. <laughs> shout out to shout out to all my five my five six seven year old young men, man, man on their way to uh in the snow and in kindergarten and first grade, second grade falling because they can't take their backpack off, man, and take their snow boots off, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah, man. Though just a good. Those were the good old days, man. And uh, now we're, so so I, I, I'm living proof, y'all. I'm living proof that crime doesn't pay, work ethic and discipline does, all right? And uh, so, Mr. Haney, good job, good job. So, do you want to recant that statement? <laughs> it's Bob, my daddy. Do black fight fan want to recant that statement? <laughs> I guess I'm the, I guess I am like the uh the uh the genius whisper. You know what I mean? The genius whisper. You know what I mean? But anyways, man, I want to say uh 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 I was right. PBC fighters. Devin Haney has fought the best fighters he could possibly fight. He's in the Hall of Fame. Three fights in 10 months, 10, over $10 million. And you guys haven't fought yet. Who's making more money? Who's becoming more popular? Who's trending in this blogger sphere? Devin Haney is getting videos and tweets and every day. Every day. No one's talking about David Benavidez right now. No one's really talking about Caleb Plant right now. No one's talking about Jamal Charlo right now. Anybody, no one's talking about Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mares. <laughs> Any other A-level fighters at PBC? Everyone's talking about Earl Spence. Everyone's talking about Tank. Tank's trial starts today, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Come on, give me some A-names. Oh, shit. Damn, they, ain't, they run. No one's talking about Keith Thurman today. No one's talking about Danny Garcia today. No one's talking about J-Rock today. No one's talking about Jared Hurd today. These are A-level fighters at PBC. No one's talking about Jamel Charlo today. And he got a fight in 40 days. I'm just keeping it a buck, man. I tell the truth on my channel, and you're, only, you're gonna respect me even more when you retire and you're five years out and you look back and be like, damn, Fred was 100. Fred really cared. Yep. And, and you're going to look at these other YouTube channels. Oh, man, they were just jocking me. You know what I mean? They just wanted an interview. I don't want no interview, man. My personality can drive my platform. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I mean? So, you know, how many times did I just say that? I sound like Umar Johnson. Hit the cash app. Yeah. Hit the cash app. Yeah. Hit the cash app. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when I tell you I'm having so much fun, man, on my, uh, on my YouTube channel now being free. Oh, man, not going to fights. And uh, I could sit in my office and drive the boxing conversation. It's just an amazing thing. I'm looking at these snow. I, I want to show y'all these snow-capped mountains so bad, but you'll know what street it is. Somebody will know, man, as big as my platform is. But anyways, man, y'all have a great day. Uh, I guess I'm the truth, Sam. I told y'all. You know what I mean? Uh, barbershop Conversations.
feel free to hit the subscribe button. Bob going to keep you active, man. Bob going to keep you active. He ain't going to pay you what a pay-per-view will make. That's a guarantee. Everybody know that now. Everybody know that. But uh, when I bring people on my platform, it's to give y'all the information. I don't need relationships with the people I interview. No, give me the information. That's why I researched them. That's why you see me with a pen and a pencil. That's why I don't I don't ask open-ended. 95% of media ask open-ended questions. So how was your day? No. I don't ask how was your day. That That's an example. I don't ask open-ended questions so the motherfucker can talk for five minutes and fill a bus and emotionally control you in the interview. No, I don't ask. So how was your day? So uh, how did you get into boxing? No, you need to know how we got into boxing. So at seven, at seven, y'all walked into the gym. And so why did y'all come back at eight years old? That should be the question. Oh, so what inspired you to get into boxing? Nigga, that's a 10 minute story. <laughs> Journalism one on one. That's why I'm the best to ever do it of this ever, man. I think Brian Custer is over me. So he's the best to ever do it up there. He's probably a class over me. If I'm 45, Brian Cuss is probably 48. He looks great. Whatever, whatever he is, he looks great. So you got Brian Cuss of that era. You got Fred Jick Hawthorne of this era. I don't know who's below me, but ain't nobody better than me. I just don't do it as much anymore. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comeback. Man, I got a lot of time on my hands, especially in the holiday season. You know, while the kids are in school, and uh, um, I got a lot of time right now. So. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. But y'all PBC fighters better stop letting Al Heyman's uh, 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 smooth baritone voice pimp you out of your motherfucking prime. That's what I got to say. And uh, barbershop conversations, man. Y'all better listen to AB. AB got three fights in 12 months. Devin Haney got three fights in 10 months. PBC fighters, y'all say y'all want to fight three times a year. Inactivity is the, is the, uh, is the career killer. What you gonna do about it? You just gonna sit on your hands and hope that and hope. Y'all got that Obama hope insurance? How the fuck are you a fighter in the ring but a coward outside the ring? Come on, man. Ain't no listen, ain't no ain't nobody. I ain't got no leaders in my life. I wake up every morning as the leader of the Hawthorne dynasty. And uh just like they got the Ming dynasty in China. You know what I mean? They got another dynasty over there. We got the Hawthorne dynasty in Los Angeles, California. You know what I mean? And uh, um, uh, I wake up every morning as the leader. I ain't got no leader. I ain't got no Louis Farrakhan's in my life. I ain't got no Pastor Noah Jones in my life. I'm the leader. Dre knows it. Kennedy knows it. Lincoln knows it. When are you going to wake up PBC fighters as your own leader. Why is Al Heyman your leader? He should be your advisor. He should be working for you. You shouldn't have to wait in silence. I'm gone, man. Or because some of you fighters going to be mad at me for this video. And some of you going to be like, man, you know, Fred is right. When you fighting again? I don't see you with a marketing campaign. I don't. I, I ain't see you while I'm watching the NBA. I ain't see you in no commercial. I saw Ryan Garcia, though. <clears throat> I did see him. Barbershop conversations. I'm going, y'all. Peace.